I, yeah, like I said, I wanted to start with kind of a general overview of the libraries, um, kind of centering on our website, which is library.columbia.edu, um, and showing you some key features that I think will be helpful to you as you get started using library resources. Um, so the first thing these days that I like to point out to library users is this light blue bar at the top of the um, library homepage. And actually you'll find this bar at the top of um, just about every library page. And if we click here on read more, um, we'll be brought to the library status updates page. And this is the place to go with any questions you have about how the COVID-19 pandemic affects library service um, and also anything about um, closings or adjusted hours. So you can see here at the top, um, this last update was yesterday. Yes, yesterday was the 15th um, with holiday service modifications and we're expecting a lot of snow, so we'll be closing. Um, but more uh, relevant in the long term is you can see information about physical spaces um, and then borrowing access to collections online and how to get help um, from a research expert or how to get training. So if you ever have a question like, you know, how do I have this item scanned in the context of COVID or you know, I'm going to be in New York, can I use the library um, in person? This is the place to go. And when someone asks me a question like that, usually I will go right to this page um, because it's updated very frequently. Um, the next thing that I think is really, really important for users to know is the Ask a Librarian um, page and all the services listed there. So you can find this page under um, the I want to heading um, with the question mark icon. And if we click here, um, we're going to see a few different things that are pretty useful. So the number one thing I want you to know about is this Ask a Librarian instant message chat box. Um, and you can see right now it says chat is offline. If you click here, you can see the hours. Um, all of these hours are in New York time, Eastern Standard Time. Um, but starting at 9 a.m. our time, you can chat um, in real time with a real library staff member. So if you have a question that you, um, you know, want answered quickly or you need to be pointed in the right direction, um, and you don't want to send an email, this is a great way to do that. So I, I highly recommend using this service um, to get in contact with us. Other ways that are um, useful, I think, are scheduling a video or phone consultation, which you can do by clicking on this link here, um, or just browsing the list of librarians by, um, by a subject, which you can do if you click on this, this link here. Um, and you can either fill out this form or send us an email and set up a consultation. A consultation is just a one-on-one -on -one or small group meeting with a research, uh, uh, research expert in whatever, you know, subject that you're interested in researching. Um, and we can help to point you in the direction of, you know, appropriate resources for your search. Um, we can help you brainstorm the right keywords to use. Um, and generally come up with a search strategy for what you're looking for. Um, so that is one of, I think, the most important services that we offer in the libraries. That's just our expertise as, as librarians and as um, you know, research experts. Um, this link here will also allow you to just send us an email if you don't want to meet with us. Um, and your email will be routed to the appropriate person you just click here um, and fill out the, the email form. I don't really recommend that you call us or text us right now um, because in the context of COVID, it, it, that's not really the most efficient way to get in contact. I would definitely recommend email or chat over those. 
Okay, I see. Let me see if we've got a question in the chat. Oh, yes. Um, if you're just joining us, please um, go ahead and, and let, let us know where, um, where you're coming from, where, what school, um, and what you are working on. What project are you working on? Okay, so going back to the home page that's here. Um, this next section that I want to point out is the events and training section. So you can see we have three different types of events, public programs, which you can see here, um, workshops, which tend to be geared towards, you know, learning a specific program or gaining a particular skill. So you can see here we've got database demos, um, Clio demonstrations, and I'll do a brief Clio de demonstration in just a minute, uh, but Clio is our online catalog where you can find books um, and other resources, GIS crash, crash course if you're interested in, um, you know, geo data. Sometimes we have podcasting workshops. Um, sometimes we have like subject specific workshops, like sometimes I do entrepreneurship ones. So this is definitely worth just checking out and seeing what we're offering. And the great thing um, right now is that all of these workshops are being offered online. So you can access them from anywhere. Um, and then the third sort of event that we have is called drop in help. There's nothing um, in this category right now because the semester is coming to an end, but this is kind of the equivalent of, um, you know, walking up to a library desk and just asking a question. Um, so we'll list the times that we just um, sit in a Zoom room and wait for students to come ask us questions. And um, I expect we'll have more of these available um, starting again in January. Um, but this is, in my experience, a highly underused resource. Um, so it's another great way to instantly connect with a librarian if, if it happens to be a time when we're doing drop in help. So I really do recommend checking back here and, and seeing those times. Um, okay. One last thing on the homepage that I want to show you um, is the services and tools um, menu. If you click here and then click on for students, you now have um, kind of an alphabetized list of everything that all the services and tools that the libraries make available to you. Um, so you can kind of look through this to get a sense of all of the many things that the libraries do um, and can do for you. And you can see it ranges quite a bit of different types of, of services and tools. Um, but the one that I really want to um, highlight for you right now is the research guides. So we click here we are now able to see um, all of the research guides by subject. What a research guide is, is just a curated collection of library resources um, by subject. So what I always say is these are a really great way to get started on your research if it happens to be a time when all your librarians are asleep and you're up working. Um, which is probably even more ap applicable in this context where we're all in different time zones. Um, so let's say that you're studying, um, uh, let's do sociology, which is the guide I'm a little more familiar with. Let's st say you're studying sociology, um, you're going to get some information about who the librarian would be for that, that subject. Um, so in this case, it would be uh, my colleague Sophie, here's her contact information, but you don't even actually have to talk to anyone to see all the work that um, Sophie has already done um, to guide you in the right direction towards doing sociology research. Um, and so you can see there's a lot of information here. And generally, um, what in my experience, what students are often looking for when they're first getting started is articles, um, academic articles, or sometimes other types of articles. Often our guides will have something that says find articles. And then usually you'll find information about what databases are best to find articles in this um, 
subject area. And so we've got our interdisciplinary ones here, which are usually a great place to start, and then um, more specific, more specific subject databases. So again, this is the way to go about finding academic articles is to identify the database you want to search in, open up that database, which generally you can do just by here we are in Clio, clicking on the search database link, logging in with your union password. And now we would be able to search here and find those articles. Okay, oops. Okay. We're not looking for government information right now. I'm gonna pause briefly uh, to see if we have any questions in the chat or if anyone wants to unmute and ask a question. Okay, um, if at any point you do have a question, you can please just put it in the chat and I will um, answer it as we go along because I find that um, questions about the library homepage and Clio tend to be really relevant to whatever we're talking about. So no need to, to wait until I'm finished. Okay, back to the library's homepage. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk about before we take um, subject specific questions um, is Clio, which is, like I said before, the library's online catalog. Um, so the Clio is a great place to go to find books, to find government documents, to find journals by title, um, to find databases um, and publications by title. Uh, it's not the best place to go to just find articles. Like I just said, the best place to go to find articles is in a database. Um, so when we go into Clio, what I would expect to be looking for most of the time is books. Um, if you do a search right here, you will be brought right into Clio and it will look something like this. You can also, if you prefer, type in just clio.columbia.edu um, and see kind of the same thing, just a blank search. So that's, they, they leave the same thing, but you'll see, uh, I think, you know, you'll see library staff doing either one, but they're, they're the same. Um, if you've never used Clio before, this first screen may be, um, a little bit overwhelming uh, because we have lots of different types of results in this quick search um, interface. Um, oh, Eamon is providing links. Thank you, Eamon. Um, so we've got the catalog results and that's what I mentioned before, books, um, government documents maybe, uh, journal titles perhaps, um, databases or individual publications. And we've got this thing um, called Articles Plus, and you may be asking, but you just said that this is not a good way to find articles. Um, it's not that Clio can't find articles, it's that Clio will give you so many options with articles that um, it's gonna be really, really hard to narrow down to the things that you actually want. You can see this number is huge. Um, so if you have a specific title, you can often find it using the Articles Plus, but if you don't know what article you're looking for, you're looking for articles by subject or keyword, um, this tool is, um, yeah, just a little bit, it, it's going to give you too much to work with. So again, we recommend using a database. Other things you'll see here are Academic Commons results. Academic Commons is very cool. Um, it's the way that we can make um, our faculty and scholars and even students uh, research and work accessible and open access to anybody on the internet. Um, if you, if those scholars choose to put their work in academic commons. Um, 
so that's a good thing to know about, especially once you graduate. Um, it's a way to maintain access to some content, but um, it's not usually what people are looking for when they search Clio. Uh, then we have geodata, which is, you know, like map or geographic data. Also very cool, often not what we're looking for. And then we have um, libraries, website um, results. So you can see I search sports management, which is a topic that I cover. Um, so you're seeing my picture because um, my guides are coming up. Okay. Oh, do we have a question? Maybe not. Um, okay, so all that is to say is that very often you can click right from quick search into catalog in this menu on the left here. And then you'll be able to see, you know, catalog results. And what we're seeing here are kind of what I said we should expect, which is um, books, and we're also seeing ebooks. And, you know, looking at the format. Uh, bar here, it also looks like we're seeing some um, government documents and some journals um, and even some conference proceedings. Um, the main question that I tend to hear students asking when they first see Clio is, how do I actually access this content? Which is a great question. Okay, so you'll notice that result one and three are the same. Um, the difference between these is that this number one is a print book and number three is an ebook. So we'll use that as an example of how to get this content. Okay. When we open up a Clio record, which is what this page is, this is a record for this particular book. Um, on the left side, we'll see information about the book, such as title, author, um, publisher information, and then these subjects. Um, subjects are um, often useful to you because they are standardized across Clio and actually usually standardized um, research libraries uh, in the US because this is the you know standard library of Congress uh, research or search headings. Um, but kind of what that means for you in Clio is that if we wanted to see information about sports administration in Great Britain, for example, we could just click here and see everything in Clio that's tagged that way. Um, and there are 19 things. So that's one way to search Clio. Um, so that's what we'll see on the left. On the right, we will see information about how to actually access the, the item. Um, and so we can see here, there's a location, there is some information online. And it says this is a publisher description, it's a related resource. So that tells me this is not actually the book. Um, and then it says offsite place request for ele electronic delivery and there's a call number. Um, so if you're not actually on campus, um, it doesn't really matter where the book is. What you need to know is whether you can place a scan request. Um, and so when there's a link here that says scan, you can place a scan request and all you need to do is click on it um, a little window will open up and you will just fill in the information it asks for and, and hit submit. And um, we will be able to provide up to one chapter at a time as a PDF for you. The other option with books would be um, if something is available as an ebook. So like I said, this book is also available as an ebook. We can see it here. Um, this actually has a more uh, has more information on the left. It looks like we've got a table of contents as well as a summary, um, which is great. That's that's useful. Um, and then on the right, we have um, a link to the ebook, um, the ebook itself. And all we have to do to access it is just click this link. And if we were to click download, we could download the whole book. Um, that's not always the case. Sometimes there is a, a download limit. Sometimes you have to read the ebook in your browser. Sometimes you can only download one chapter at a time. It just depends on the publisher. Unfortunately, we have no 
control over um, that part of the ebook experience, but um, what you'll generally want to look for is a button that says download um, or, you know, something about reading in the browser. Um, and if you don't want to download the whole book, you only are interested in a particular chapter, often it's already broken down that way and you can download individual chapters or view individual chapters. Um, I've got three minutes before I said I would be finished. So I have just one more thing to show you in Clio and that is the advanced search. So if we click here where it says advanced search, now we'll have the option to enter um, multiple phrases or keywords um, or to target our phrases to particular parts of the Clio record. So that maybe sounded like librarian nonsense. So let me show you what I mean. Um, if we click on this field, um, this drop down, it will default to all fields. And that's just doing kind of a regular keyword search. It's looking for what you type in in every part of the Clio record. Um, but if we were to change this to title, we could just search the titles. Um, and only get results that had the phrase, word or phrase that you typed in in the title. Um, we could search by author. If you know the author of something, you could put the author's name here and you'd only be searching, you know, the author field and so on. Um, those are probably the most common would be author or title searching, um, but you can do a search by any of these um, types of information. Also, um, alternatively, like I said, you can search with multiple phrases. So before I just did sports management, let's say I wanted to get more specific and look at sports management in, I don't know, New York. So now I've got multiple phrases, I can search um, and my search has become a little bit smaller. Um, I also have the option to use the um, menu on the left to narrow my results. Um, so when I search most frequently in Clio, I will probably be narrowing by publication date, but that's kind of just based on the subjects I cover. That won't be the most relevant to everyone. Um, you could look at these other narrows too. You can narrow by language. You can um, narrow by subject. Um, or any of these sort of narrower topics. And if we were to click on one of these, let's say management, now I'm seeing the 96 items that have both sports management and New York um, as a keyword search, as well as management as a subject. And remember those subjects are these these standard phrases that are assigned across the whole um, catalog. Okay, um, I'm gonna pause again for questions and then I'm gonna open it up for more subject specific questions um, for um, my, my colleagues who are also on the call. 